Good afternoon, and thanks for joining the webinar. My name is Elizabeth Siegel, and I'm a policy analyst at the Council of State Governance Justice Center. Before turning to the content of the webinar, I'd like to briefly talk through a couple of house cleaning items about how the webinar is going to work, and then take a brief moment to tell you a little bit about the National Reentry Resource Center and Justice Center's use program later on in this webinar. Um, Any time during this webinar, you can ask a question by typing it into the QA panel on the bottom right-hand portion of your screen. We'll keep a running list of the content-related questions that we receive, and then ask the panelists to respond to the questions during the last segment of the webinar. We'll do our best to get through as many questions as possible. Um, if you encounter any technical or audio problems during this webinar, please call WebEx Technical Support at 1-866-229-3239. Please understand that there are some technical issues you may not be able to resolve. Um, and for this reason, we're recording this event and we'll post it to our website. Uh, we should have the webinar posted online early next week. And once it's been posted, we'll email you a link to the recording. In the reminder emails that you received about this webinar, there was a link to a survey that we'd like for you to fill out. Um, it, it asks some very basic questions about your program that will allow us to better familiarize ourselves with your specific project. Um, and the survey is short. It shouldn't take more than five or 10 minutes to fill out. Um, if you haven't filled it out yet, um, please do so after the webinar. Um, in case you didn't notice the link in the reminder email that you received, We'll make sure and include it in the email that we send out next week, um, along with the archived recording of this webinar. We're really excited to bring together the 17 new 2014 Second Chance Act grantees planning and implementing juvenile reentry initiatives. Um, this year, there are three new Second Chance Act juvenile reentry programs. We'll hear today from Nicole Dennis, who is the Deputy Associate Administrator of the Juvenile Justice Systems Improvement Division from the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. Um, she'll start off today's webinar with an overview of OJJDP um, and then outline key details of the 2014 Second Chance Act Grant Program. Um, she'll also take us through some important grant management and federal compliance expectations on behalf of the agency. I'll then talk briefly about the Council of State Government's Justice Center and the National Reentry Resource Center. Um, and then you'll hear from Josh Weber, um, who directs our juvenile justice program. And Josh will discuss some of the expectations regarding grant deliverables for all grant programs, um, as well as describe the breadth and scope of the technical assistance offered by the NRC. Um, and then I'll walk through the National Reentry Resource Center website um, and provide some more detail relating to the uh, center's various offerings of support for the field at large. Um, and as stated earlier, we'll close out the webinar with sufficient opportunity for questions and answers from participants. Um, so with that, Nicole, I'll hand off this next portion to you. Okay, um, first I would just like to congratulate you all and um, I wanted to let you know that the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention looks forward to working with each and every one of you. First, I would like to provide um, just the background about our office. OJJDP has been working to improve our nation's juvenile justice system since its establishment in 1974 under the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act. Um, the JJDPA, which is what we call the act, is celebrating its 40th anniversary um, in 2014, so this year. And we are immensely proud of how this landmark legislation has changed the face of juvenile justice. OJJDP is currently under the leadership of Administrator Bob Linsenby. OJJDP also supports a developmental approach to juvenile justice system reform. We understand that there is a need to reform the juvenile justice system to match what we know about youth development. 
We understand that there are fundamental and biological differences in how teenagers' brains work. And simply put, we understand that children and teens are not many adults. Recently, um, OJJDP was reorganized, and we are now organi organizationally structured to ensure our grants and our work have a greater impact in the field. The funding that you all are receiving is managed and being overseen by the Juvenile Justice System Improvement Division, also known as JJSI. JJSI received money from the Bureau of Justice Assistance to develop programs that focus on juvenile justice system reform and reentry. In addition, the division works with juveniles and family drug courts, gangs, indigent defense, collateral consequences, correctional education, school collaboration, family engagement, and other areas that touch the juvenile justice system and youth who have contact with the system. We also partner with a number of federal organizations and departments, including the Department of Labor, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Education, and other offices within USDOJ. We also strongly encourage our grantees to work with other grantees in their communities and states that are also receiving funding from our office and some of our other program areas including ensuring that the work you are doing aligns with some of the state funding that your state may receive under their Title II Formula Block Grant, which is administered by our State and Community Development Division. We also have a number of mentoring grants that your state may receive that is administered by our Youth Development Prevention and Safety Division. In addition, we also highly encourage you, if possible, to think about leveraging existing federal resources in your communities to assist you with implementing your grant. So on any given day, there are approximately 60,000 youth that are confined in juvenile detention and correctional facilities and hundreds of thousands more on probation. This system um, actually um, may, this system contact actually may result in hardships or collateral consequences on adolescents' lives. Moreover, it affects the prospects for long-term success in adulthood, including youth's ability to successfully integrate into and thrive in their communities. We fund programs, like I mentioned before, under the Second Chance Act that help support wraparound services as listed in this slide. As I mentioned before, we also partner with a number of federal agencies and offices throughout the US DOJ. We work extremely close to the Office of Bureau Justice and Assistance, also known as BJA, and the Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. A representative from the Center of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships is also on this webinar, Mark Roscoe. Good afternoon. And he will be working closely with our fatherhood grantees. Their office is able to provide a number of resources on fatherhood and family engagement, and you all will be receiving more information about their office and the work that their office does in the future. In addition, we work with the office of um, NIJ on Research and Evaluation, the National Institute of Justice. Now I'll discuss some of the grant administrative processes um, that are required to ensure that your grant is successfully implemented. Number one is our progress report, or our Categorical Assistance Progress Report, also known as CAPR. And these reports are due twice a year. They are due January 30th and July 30th. If you do not submit your reports, you may be um, penalized by having your funds um, withheld. So it's extremely important that you submit these reports by the due date and that you include information as to how you are fulfilling your program goals and objectives in this report. At this point, you all should have reviewed your award package and documents. 
Please ensure that the name of your authorized representative, your point of contact, and financial point of contact are correct. If they are not correct, please go into GMS and generate a grant adjustment notice to correct the contact people or contact your assigned um, JJSI program specialist. The authorized representative is the person who signs the award doc documents and return those documents to OCFO. In addition, if you have not received a final budget clearance, please work with your assigned grant manager. You should not and cannot start work on your grant until your budget is clear. To access grant funds, you must work with OJJDP and OCFO on your program work plan and your budget. You must also ensure that any special conditions prohibiting spending drawdowns are removed by OJP. In addition, any administrative issues such as missing reports, um, audits, SAM, ID numbers, all that must be resolved as soon as possible. In addition to the work that your program manager will do in ensuring that you implement your grant, they are also responsible for monitoring your grant. Grant monitoring responsibilities include ensuring that the programs are implemented according to the approved work plan and application and providing guidance on OJP grant program requirements, general federal regulations, and basic administrative and financial reporting requirements. There are also two other grant monitoring types that you will probably be a part of um, through your grant um, process working with our office. One is an enhanced program desk review, also known as an EPDR. And this is conducted largely over the phone and your program grant manager will work with you to get information to understand your grant, understand where you're at with implementing, and help you with any issues that you may be having um, with your grant. We also do on-site monitoring visits, which assess the overall program progress and administration of your grant. Um, this is also a time where financial issues or technical assistance needs, um, collaboration issues may um, be identified as well. You will get ample time if you are selected for EPDR or on-site monitoring visit um, to get the information requested and to make arrangements with your um, program specialist or program manager. You may be wondering how often your grant may be monitored. And the monitoring frequency depends on the type of monitoring necessary based on a system that we use um, it's called a grant assessment tool, but also based on your progress reports and any other type of factors that we may get um, coming in from the state or the field or even your team about your grant progress. Sometimes we or our assistant attorney general or other program offices may request to visit your program to see how your program is being implemented and even to notate best practices. If that's the case, again, you will receive notification, and we expect that you would um, be fully um, engaged in this process as we try to work with you on some of these site visits. In addition to the progress reports that, we're re that we recently discussed, um, we wanted to provide you guys with a little bit more information as to what we expect in your progress reports. So these progress reports should include information as to how you are fulfilling your goals and objectives. You can attach deliverables such as planning documents, agendas, or other materials that you have worked on or developed during the reporting period. If you are having challenges with your grant, they should be notated and justified in this report. You can also share best practices and successes because your grant manager will review these reports. If the grant manager has questions with your report, they will send it back to you to address. If your reports are not submitted by the due date or you have not responded to your grant manager's questions by the due date, your funds will be withheld.
Again, if you're having any issues with your reporting requirements or any issues with data requirements, it is your responsibility to properly inform your OJJDP program specialist. Your OJJDP program specialist will be able to assist you with all of these issues. In addition to your progress report, you will also have to use the Data Collection Technical Assistance Tool, which is DCTAT report, and that's used to report on your performance measures. If you need help using DCTAT or DTAC, um, please make sure you call the help desk. They are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5.30. They are also um, responsive via email, and you, will, you may need to go to them to get a username and password. So please make sure that you read your financial guides and your grant um, award documents to ensure you have a password to access DTAC, DCTAC. In addition to your progress report and for performance reporting, you also are required to submit federal financial reports, which we call FFRs, SF-425. And these are um, due quarterly, January 30th, April 30th, July 30th, and October 30th. Um, OJJDP and our office um, uh, financial, What's OCFO? Office of Controller and Financial Operations? OCFO. Will perform financial monitoring as well. They will review your FFRs and your rate of expenditures against the approved budget and your program plan. So if there are any times where you have to change your budget, you must make sure you submit a grant adjustment notification and notify our office and get approval that your budget or your program scope or any deliverables are being changed. In addition, um, these financial progress reports will also ensure that you are complying with federal guidelines um, regarding financials and general accounting practices, and also ensure that the grants you are using are allowable. And the name for OCFO, the formal name is the Office of Chief Financial Officer. We use a lot of acronyms here. Next, you have various grant deliverables that are associated with your grant. NRRC will work with and assist you all with producing some of your required deliverables. Um, just to know, you all should submit to your assigned program specialist and NRRC the following documents and notifications. Your aggregate data findings on youth outcomes, a completed planning and implementation guide, training and technical assistance plans, um, notification of planned meetings with partners and other groups, meeting agendas and minutes should also be attached, Grantees should also advise their assigned program manager of planned site visits with NRRC. We will be monitoring to make sure that you all are working with the TTA provider as stipulated in your grant. Um, for now, these documents should be either emailed or uploaded into our grant management assistance system, along with your progress reports and DC TAT reports. Unless you have um, heard something different from your program manager, please make sure that you submit these reports via GMS. If you have questions regarding what deliverables are due, you should contact your assigned grant manager and they'll be able to provide you with additional clarification. Again, with post-award reminders, just simply remember that you must must, must make sure that you respond to special conditions of your grant. Non-compliance of any of the special conditions will result in the funding of your grant um, funds being put on hold. If you need to review the post-award instructions, you can follow the link that's outlined in the slides. In addition, when you get ready to close out your award, you will have 90 days after the project period end date to submit final progress reports, DC TAT reports, and financial reports. 
all drawdown of all funds or the obligation of funds that were not drawn down will go back to the Office of Justice Program. If you find out towards the end of your grant that you will need a no-cost grant extension, you may request that, but that request must be made at least 45 days prior to your project end date. If we do not get that request prior to that time, we may not be able to extend your award. If you need assistance, you can contact your program grant manager, the grant management system, the Office of the Chief Financial Officer, OCFO, or the Data Collection Technical Assistance Tool, DCTAT. Your JJSI program specialist is your go-to person for issues regarding your award. They will be available to provide you with technical and programmatic direction, assist you in defining operation or pro programmatic options, and also present solutions um, to you for any challenging issues. OCFO provides TA through regional trainings and monitoring site visits. So if you have any questions regarding the OMB circulars or allowable expenses, you can feel free to go to one of these trainings and they will help you understand the financial obligations attached to your award. The grant management system also provides training and that's available um, for your assistance at www.ojp.usdoj.gov GM backslash GMSCDT. And all this information is provided in your award document. In addition, we have NRRC that provides training and technical assistance, and they are also available to assist you with program planning and implementation. So the OJJDP, JJSI um, team consists of Gwendolyn Dilworth, Patrick Dunkhorst, Mark Morgan, and Angela Parker, myself, Nicole, and our Associate Administrator, Kelly Dressler. If you should have any questions, please make sure you contact your assigned specialist. They are familiar with your grant. Make sure you include your name, grant award number, telephone number, email, and a short description of the issue and all of your messages. They will get back to you promptly. If you have issues and you cannot reach your assigned grant manager, please reach out to myself. My information is on the slide. Um, we just encourage you to become very familiar with your award instructions, your special conditions, and the OJP financial guide. Only the grant point of contact, the financial point of contact, or the authorized representative um, should contact the program manager. We again look forward to working with you, and if you have questions, please make sure you reach out to your program, your assigned JJSI program specialist. That's it for me. Elizabeth? Thanks, Nicole. Appreciate that. Um, so just to give you an overview of the Council of State Government's Justice Center, um, CSG is a national nonprofit that serves policymakers at the local, state, and federal levels and from all branches of government. We provide practical, nonpartisan advice and consensus-driven strategies informed by available evidence to increase public safety and strengthen communities. With the passage of the Second Chance Act, which Nicole described earlier, in 2009, CSG Justice Center was selected to launch the National Reentry Resource Center and provide training and technical assistance to all Second Chance Act grantees. The National Reentry Resource Center is administered by the Council of State Government's Justice Center in partnership with the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice. Since 2009, nearly 600 Second Chance Act grant awards have been made to government agencies and nonprofit organizations from 49 states for reentry programs serving adults and juveniles.
Approximately 20% of these grants have been awarded to agencies and organizations serving a juvenile justice population. And the map in front of you represents Second Chance Act juvenile grantees from FY09 through FY14 this year. And each color represents a specific grant program category. For example, on this map, you'll find reentry initiatives that have served or are currently serving youth with co-occurring disorders, as well as mentoring programs for youth returning from out-of-home placement. There are three new Second Chance Act grant categories for 2014, all of which aim to improve reentry outcomes for youth returning from out-of-home placement. The first is the Comprehensive Juvenile Reentry Systems Reform Planning Program, or JSR. Grantees in this category must develop a comprehensive system-wide reentry strategy to reduce recidivism and improve other outcomes for youth under system supervision. The JSR program is composed of two phases, planning and implementation. Grantees must first complete the planning phase requirements set forth by the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention to apply for implementation funding. These planning grants provide local and state system leaders with the opportunity to assess their juvenile justice systems and develop an implementation proposal to compete for potential grant awards of up to $2 million to implement their strategic plans. The NRC will host webinars on December 4th and December 5th for JSR and demonstration grantees. Um, these webinars will provide an overview of the Second Chance Act Planning and Implementation Guide that all grantees are required to complete as evidence of having completed the planning process. NRC, NRC staff will walk through instructions for completing this guide and discuss the technical assistance and support available to grantees to assist with its completion. And we'll be sending you um, invitations for those webinars in the near future. The second grant program is the two-phase juvenile reentry demonstration program, planning and implementation. Grantees from this category must also develop and implement a juvenile reentry strategy to reduce recidivism and improve other outcomes for youth under system supervision. So like the JSR grant program, the juvenile reentry demonstration program is composed of two phases, planning and implementation. Um, grantees must first complete the requirements for the planning phase to proceed to the implementation phase and receive the bulk of their grant award for their proposed implementation activities. Uh, unlike the JSR grants, demonstration grantees don't apply for implementation funds, but are, however, required to demonstrate completion of the planning process um, through the Second Chance Act Planning and Implementation Guide. And the third program is the Strengthening Relationships Between Young Fathers and Their Children, a Reentry Mentoring Project. And grantees in this category must develop and implement a juvenile reentry plan that ensures the transition young fathers make from secure confinement facilities back to their families and communities is successful. Um, and this grant is also composed of two phases, uh, planning and implementation. Um, grantees must go through a planning phase to proceed to implementation phase um, after having completed the planning and implementation guide similar to the other two grant programs. Um, and your technic NRC technical assistance provider um, for this particular program, we'll be reaching out to um, grantees to schedule um, a time to walk through the expectations of this guide. This slide represents the number of grantees in each of the programs described. Um, there are six juvenile reentry systems reform grantees, um, six demonstration grantees, and five fatherhood mentoring grantees. Um, so in total, there are 14 states represented in the current Second Chance Act program year serving youth, and those states include Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Iowa, North Carolina, California, South Dakota, Virginia, Georgia, New York, Mississippi, Illinois, Florida, and Missouri. So CSG promotes a wide range of opportunities to connect grantees to each other, despite some of the geographic distances. Um, so some of these opportunities include peer-to-peer -peer conference calls, webinars, and on-site learning. 
Um, and the National Reentry Resource Center can facilitate these connections as part of our technical assistance support, um, which we'll discuss in greater detail later. Um, so next, uh, we have Josh Weber on the line, who directs um, our juvenile justice program here at the Council of State Government's Justice Center. And Josh will now discuss some of the grantee deliverables and go into more detail on the technical assistance offered by the NRC. Um, thanks, Josh. So one moment, we're just going to get Josh in the line. So I'll go ahead and get started while waiting for Josh. Um, just to provide you a brief overview on some of the grant deliverables that are required of grantees in this grant program. Um, First, all grantees, as I mentioned, are required to engage in a planning phase of up to six to 12 months. Um, so this looks different, different based on each of the grant programs, um, but there is a, a portion of the grant and then time period carved out for this process. Um, and the National Rancher Resource Center will work closely with you um, to help you know, establish um, planning criteria and deliverables attached to this planning process. Um, all grantees are also required to complete um, the planning and implementation guide that Nicole discussed. Um, that guide um, will be sent to all of the grantees as a follow-up to this webinar um, and is a requirement of all grantees in order to move on to the implementation phase. And essentially, this planning and implementation guide is meant to serve as a roadmap for planning a reentry uh, initiative that reflects some of the core principles for reducing recidivism and improving outcomes for youth um, under, under your um, program. Um, all JSR and demonstration grantees are required to establish an effective reentry task force as part of this grant program. So this reentry task force is the first major deliverable as part of this grant program. And this task force is really meant to create an initial effort to um, build that reentry initiative, that reentry strategic plan, and see that plan forward. Um, so this will be the first phase in the process. Um, all JSR and demonstration grantees are, will also be asked to develop a plan for tracking recidivism and other youth outcome improvements. So being able to be able, be able to collect data, to um, measure the, the right data, um, report that data and use that data to really make better decisions for youth in your system and to use that data to really drive overall systems improvements and, and lead investment. So um, that will be another requirement as part of this grant program. Um, JSR and demonstration grantees are also will be asked to develop a comprehensive reentry strategic plan um, as part of the final phase of the planning process. So this plan should include um, demonstration of having a reentry task force in place, a comprehensive task force. Um, this plan should include um, uh, a outline of how um, the grantee will track recidivism and other youth outcome da data and use that data. Um, and the plan will also um, uh, include um, how the grantee will go about implementing the different um, activities outlined in that strategic plan. And then finally, JSR and demonstration grantees will be asked to develop a sustainability plan um, throughout the, uh, and, and final, and as well as an implementation plan. So what's really key about this is that the plan implementation guide is something that your National Reentry Resource Center technical assistance provider will walk through with you. Um, this guide will be broken down in phases, so you'll not be asked to complete this in one fell swoop, um, and there'll be um, a lot of opportunity for um, a back and forth 
um, with NRC staff as you move through their project. Josh, did Liz. you want to add anything? Yes, thank you. Uh, sorry about those technical difficulties. Um, so uh, a couple notes about um, this process and the technical assistance that we provide. And, um, more generally, that we're excited to be able to work with all of you and partner with you to improve outcomes for youth in your juvenile justice system. Um, for those of you who are familiar with past Second Chance Act grants, uh, this year's grants are a little bit uh, different than they've been structured uh, in the past. Uh, in particular, uh, in the past, there were um, separate planning grants where grantees would only focus on planning changes to their reentry policies and practices, and then separate implementation grants where grantees received um, resources to be able to implement a reentry demonstration project. Um, this year, um, OJJDP decided to make uh, some important changes to that structure uh, because of concerns in the past that planning grantees were doing lots of great planning and then didn't have any resources to actually implement uh, their strategic plans, while implementation grantees often had to spend so much time at the beginning of their grant trying to meet the requirements of the Second Chance Act, um, including the development of the reentry task force and having a reentry strategic plan, that it was taking them a very long time to actually implement their proposed demonstration project and were often not as successful as a result. And so this year, now all grantees have to go through a required planning process with the specific deliverables that Liz has outlined in order to move forward to that implementation phase. And we're very excited to be able to partner with you to help, um, help you to uh, meet those deliverables. And so on one hand, those deliverables are requirements. On the other hand, um, we feel like they will allow grantees an opportunity to really ease into their grant award because another key change is in the past, grants had been only for a year, um, and now all demonstration grantees and the fatherhood grantees, you have a more extended time period to be able to implement those projects. So uh, the National Reentry Resource Center offers a variety of different types of technical assistance. Um, we have spent, um, as was mentioned, the last three years providing technical assistance to grantees working to improve outcomes for youth in the juvenile justice system across the country. Uh, we have also, uh, as Liz will share a little later, have spent the last year reviewing all of the most rigorous research that's been conducted on how to improve outcomes for youth in the juvenile justice system, what works, and how to implement that effectively. And so we're really a resource to all of you to help share and bring that information to you. And we do that in a variety of ways. Uh, so first, as Liz mentioned, we'll be sending all of you a planning and implementation guide that spells out um, explicitly the deliverables for your grant track, uh, the timelines associated with those deliverables, and then details a number of research and resources to help you meet those deliverables. And we'll be walking through that guide with all of you. To help implement um, the uh, different deliverables outlined in your grant, we'll provide a number of different resources. First, your technical assistance provider uh, we'll schedule um, monthly calls with you. Those calls could be more frequent, those calls can be less frequent, but it's really designed to make sure that you have access uh, on a regular basis to your technical assistance provider to help you both uh, with the deliverables of your grant, but more generally to make sure that the services and supports that you're offering to youth are really based on what works to improve outcomes, as well as to think about broader policy and practice changes that could impact reentry for all of the youth and young adults that you work with. In addition, uh, we provide the opportunity for you to connect not just with other grantees, but really um, uh, leaders in juvenile justice uh, practice across the country. We've worked with a number of different juvenile justice systems, and so if you're looking for models of how to provide effective reentry mentoring services or employment and training services, or how to use risk and needs assessments to be driving supervision and services, or how to better track your data. For pretty much any question or concern you have, there are peers and examples and models that we can share with you. 
Uh, we also do a series of webinars throughout the year on special uh, reentry topics that are of interest. Uh, and we do those that are focused on both the adult correction system as well as the juvenile justice system. Uh, we can provide a host of resource, re resources and, and tools for you. And as, as Liz will detail, a lot of those resources are currently available on our website. Um, we work with a range of expert consultants that are really leaders in the field. And so whether it's risk assessments or evidence-based practices um, or mentoring or uh, strengthening relationships with uh, young fathers and their children, we have access to national experts that um, can help provide training and technical assistance to you. And then um, with all of our grantees, we try to do at least uh, one uh, on-site visit uh, with the JSR grantees, likely to be uh, more than one visit, uh, where we uh, really help to facilitate meetings, um, help to bring different um, stakeholders together and share research and best practices, where we facilitate analysis of uh, gaps and barriers to um, more effective policy and practice. Um, and we help folks develop plans to improve the work that they're doing. And so really, um, we're here as a support to help you meet your grant deliverables, but really as a general support, both around your proposed scope of work and your broader reentry system to try to support better outcomes. Some quick examples of, of what that looks like in practice. Uh, we can help you think through um, how to track recidivism and other outcomes. Um, a challenge for many systems in terms of um, collecting the data that they need to show that they're uh, making a positive difference, how to actually analyze that data, what to do with that data. And so we've produced a number of resources around that topic and can provide training and technical assistance to help strengthen your data needs. Uh, as I mentioned, we um, often um, facilitate strategic planning sessions that can include meetings of your reentry task force, um, or if you have other stakeholder groups or advisory groups to help you um, think through uh, policy and practice changes that can make an impact for the youth that you serve. Um, we provide training on what works uh, from the research to reduce recidivism. There's a lot of discussion around evidence-based practice and sometimes uh, feels like everything's an evidence-based practice and it can be hard to distinguish um, what folks are calling evidence-based practices uh, from what's been proven to work. And so uh, we have a host of resources that we can share with you and also can directly provide training to you and your staff on um, what has shown to work to get better outcomes. Um, and then we will um, partner with you uh, to help you develop action plans, implementation plans, sustainability plans to make sure um, that you have the tools and resources that you need uh, to make your program effective. So we're really a resource for you specifically and the folks that you work with as well as the broader field to help you get better outcomes. A general timeline for what our uh, technical assistance will look like uh, over the course of the next year or so. Um, hopefully, all of you have heard from your technical assistance provider already. Um, we feel like, uh, based on our past experience, the, the most important element of uh, us being able to support you and really address your needs is that relationship. Um, and so being able to um, get to know you and get to know how your system works and get to know how your program and your services work um, is, is really the first key part uh, of that relationship. Um, for JSR grantees, and follow-up calls will go into this uh, in more in-depth, but since that's such an intensive and in-depth planning process, uh, we're asking all JSR grantees to send us um, a number of documents and information about uh, your current juvenile justice system and reentry practice. Uh, and after this call, your TA provider will be following up with you um, to identify some specific documents um, to share with us. Um, more generally for everyone, um, uh, we will have webinars um, in the beginning of December around the planning and implementation guides for uh, the demonstration and the JSR grantees. Um, for the fatherhood grantees, your TA provider will reach out to you on a more individual basis to talk through the planning implementation guide uh, and, and the expectations regarding those. 
Um, we will send out those planning and implementation guides before the webinar so you have a chance to review them and can come prepared to the webinar with any questions or concerns that you might have. Um, and then in uh, following that webinar in December, and for, for some of you earlier, we really want to have a first in-depth phone call to um, review how your system works, to review your proposed scope of work, and uh, begin to think through how we can be helpful. Uh, and, and then, uh, really, uh, for the next few months, um, there's the completion of the specific deliverables outlined uh, for the planning phase of your grant. Um, in general, it, uh, our experience is that it takes grantees about six months to complete those deliverables, depending upon your system and if you already have a reentry task force in place or some of the other requirements, it might take some grantees less time um, or it might take some grantees more time. Uh, and we will work with you in a really individualized way to support those needs and, and communicate um, progress and, and expectations with you and with OJJDP. Um, also, I uh, do want to flag that um, we uh, generally host a conference in March uh, for all Second Chance Act grantees. Um, that conference is um, pending uh, Department of Justice budget approval, but uh, we're fairly confident that we will get approval to host that conference, and that's another uh, both uh, required but also a, a significant learning opportunity for you to hear from experts across the country in different reentry topics, uh, connect with your peers, uh, and get some great information to take back to your programs. And, uh, as soon as we are able, we will send out additional information on that conference. Um, your team of providers um, consists, uh, TA providers, uh, consists of a, a number of folks who have a lot of experience working um, with uh, youth in the juvenile justice system and, and states and counties trying to improve outcomes for them. Um, so hopefully you have heard from either Nastasia, Liz, Ronin, or Cynthia already. Um, and if not, I'm sure you will hear from them shortly. With that, I'll pass things back to you, Liz. Great. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. Um, so as we mentioned, as Josh spoke, you know, your NRCTA providers will be contacting you soon, um, if not already, to schedule a preliminary phone call um, to discuss your grant activities and orient you to the National Reentry Resource Center. Um, and as Josh mentioned, um, he or she will regularly provide information about training, um, distance learning, and funding opportunities available. Um, but in addition to the information you receive from NRC, your NRCT provider, um, the NRC also distributes a monthly newsletter um, that provides information about some of the latest reentry news and research, um, as well as information about other reentry initiatives taking place around the country. Um, and we encourage you uh, staff and partners associated with each of the grants to sign up for the newsletter if, um, if you haven't done so already. Um, and for information on juvenile justice specific topics, um, be sure to select youth as a topic of interest. And you'll see a yellow circle around the subscribe where you can do that. The NRC also offers a host of external publications for the field on various reentry topics. Um, so we encourage you to visit this page to access some of the latest research and reports on issues in the field. Um, some of which have been produced by CSG Justice Center staff, um, as well as partners and stakeholders in the field. The NRC also offers a wealth of long distance learning opportunities developed by um, CSG Justice Center staff and through partners and stakeholders in the criminal and juvenile justice field. Um, Josh mentioned our work in that area earlier. Um, but all of our webinars for the field are recorded and posted on the website for the public, and so we encourage you to visit this page to view some of our past events. Um, some examples of webinars we've done in the past um, include one on what works to promote educational success for use in the juvenile justice system, um, behavioral health treatment for juveniles transitioning from out-of-home placement to the community, um, and other key topics. 
So the NRC um, houses a clearinghouse called the What Works and Reentry Clearinghouse. And the What Works and Reentry Clearinghouse was designed in partnership with the Urban Institute um, with funding from the U.S. Department of Justice's Bureau of Justice Assistance. Um, and it was created to provide federal, state, and local policymakers um, from all branches of government, as well as practitioners and, research and researchers and funders um, and others to be able to access some high-quality and um, user-friendly information on what works to reduce recidivism and improve reentry outcomes for adults and youth. Um, to address the question of what works to reduce recidivism and improve reentry outcomes, the clearinghouse um, provide some information on evaluations done on reentry programs and interventions. Um, and these programs are all aimed to reduce recidivism and address key topics like education, substance use, um, employment, housing, and more. Um, information for evaluations including the clearinghouse can be used as a resource by grantees um, to both identify effective reentry programs and also to look at some of the research on other reentry programs and interventions. Um, and within the next few months, um, additional topics will be added, including um, areas like sex offender treatment, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, supervision and sanctions. Um, and within the next year, by 2015, we'll have more information on juvenile-specific programs available to you. Um, and given the fact that many of the youth in our systems are older, the leaving juvenile justice systems um, of the age of 18 or older, some of this research will, will be relevant to this popula these population's use. Um, so as mentioned, the NRC website um, is continually updating its page with funding opportunities. Um, so please be sure to check back regularly in this area. Um, sustainability is an important topic of, uh, of, uh, in this grant program, and so um, you'll engage in exercises and discussions with your uh, NRC technical assistance provider in this area. So um, given that, we're happy to answer any questions you have throughout your project, um, and your NRC TA provider will also, also um, send you funding opportunities directly as they become available. Um, so as Josh mentioned earlier, that every year, um, with support from the U.S. Department of Justice's BJA and OJJDP, um, CSG Justice Center convenes criminal and juvenile justice experts and professionals um, and Second Chance Act grantees from across the country in Washington, D.C., um, with a conference designed to really promote collaboration among federal grantees working on adult and juvenile reentry issues. Um, Last year, we were excited to be able to feature keynote speakers such as Robert Listenby, uh, Administrator of the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, um, as well as Denise O'Donnell, Director of the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Um, and this year's conference is tentatively scheduled to take place the week of March 9th in Washington, D.C. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, this year, we'll hopefully again have um, present presentations from leading national policymakers, practitioners, um, and also include breakout sessions um, that address a wide variety of topics um, for youth. Um, so also be time set aside this year for grantees in the different grant programs. Um, so for more information about this event, um, you'll be hearing from us late, very soon. Um, and Nicole, I wanted to know if there's anything else you wanted to add about the conference. No? Okay. Um, oh. So um, the NRC website also offers um, information on resources that speak to various issues pertaining to reentry. Um, so we focus on issues such as employment, um, families, health, um, law enforcement, mental health, um, as well as areas specific to youth. Um, so on this page, um, you can click on the juvenile reentry option under the issue areas header uh, on a drop down menu and you'll be directed to the appropriate page. Um, and here is a juvenile reentry page in front of you. Um, and this page provides some of the most current information and resources um, for grantees and, and folks in the field on what works to improve youth reentry and overall juvenile justice outcomes. Um, and we're always updating this page with information that reflects 
um, some of the key research highlighted in some of the Justice Center's recently released publications, um, which I'll discuss briefly. Um, and it also features key resources and tools from leaders in the field, such as OJJDP and the MacArthur Foundation, um, who've been in instrumental in promoting positive outcomes for youth um, involved in the juvenile justice system. Um, the Justice Center's youth page um, contains more comprehensive research and technical assistance um, that really support collaborative and consensus-based um, strategies that aim to reduce recidivism, improve school discipline practices, uh, and incorporate the appropriate behavioral health interventions for youth and their families. Um, so within the Juvenile Justice Youth Program page, um, there are two main areas of focus. Um, the School Discipline Consensus Project and the Juvenile Justice Project. Um, the School Discipline Consensus Project is a national initiative to provide policy recommendations for supporting schools that are addressing the impact of, of suspension and expulsion on students' academic outcomes and involvement with the juvenile justice system. Um, the School Discipline Consensus Report um, released this past June presents a comprehensive set of consensus-based and field-driven recommendations to improve conditions for learning for all students and educators, um, recommendations to better support students with behavioral health needs, um, improve police school partnerships, and keep students out of the juvenile justice system for minor offenses. Um, so you can access this report um, through both the youth page and the school discipline consensus project page. The, school, the Juvenile Justice Project is focusing, focused on helping state and local governments, one, protect public safety, and two, you know, help youth who are involved in the juvenile justice system um, become law-abiding and productive adults. Um, you can check out the Juvenile Justice Project page, which provides an overview of this work, um, and you can also learn about our juvenile justice-related activities and access some key publications and resources from the field. Through the Juvenile Justice Project page, um, you'll be able to find two of the national publications that CSG Justice Center um, released this past July. Um, the first is a two-part white paper that um, synthesizes the research on what works to reduce recidivism and improve other outcomes for youth in the juvenile justice system. And the second is an issue brief that shares the results of a national survey of state correctional agencies, youth outcome data, collection and reporting practices, and provides recommendations for how juvenile justice systems can strengthen their capacity to make more data-driven policy, practice, and resource allocation decisions. Um, the first publication is featured on the slide, um, and it's entitled Core Principles for Reducing Recidivism and Improving Other Outcomes for Youth in the Juvenile Justice System. Um, this white paper, as I mentioned, highlights some of the core principles demonstrated by research um, that really should undergird any strategy um, to reduce recidivism and help youth in the system. And it also provides insights from research and practice on how to implement the principles effectively. Um, as well as examples of how state and local juvenile justice systems have operationalized these principles in practice. Um, in September, the NRC hosted a webinar on this white paper, and you can find the recording on our website. So I encourage you to look at that. The second publication, as I mentioned, is entitled Measuring and Using Recidivism Data to Inform Policy, Practice, and Resource Allocation. And um, I mentioned that this publication provides guidance for improving juvenile justice systems approaches to the measurement, analysis, collection, reporting, and use of recidivism data. Um, and as with the white paper, NRC hosted a webinar on this issue brief this past this September, and you can also find the recording on our website. Um, at, right now, the Justice Center is currently engaged in two pilot project, projects to apply the research and recommendations offered in the white paper and issue brief um, to help state correctional agencies reduce recidivism and improve other outcomes for youth. So I want to thank Josh and Nicole again for participating in this webinar, and I, I want to turn the next portion of this presentation to questions and answers. Um, if you haven't had a chance to present a question, 
um, please do so now in the QA panel at the bottom right hand portion of your screen. So it looks like um, one of the questions we have, um, Ms. McGrantee, um, the question looks like goes is addressed to Nicole. Um, and this question is around um, accessing funds because of conditions that require um, creating a planning and implementation plan. Um, and they're asking about um, accessing funds to be able to move forward. Um, can you talk more about this? Yes, so there are a number of special conditions related to your award. That's why at this point it's imperative for you to contact your program manager and they will assist you with what you need to do to be able to remove those conditions along with um, assisting you on, for some grantees, finalizing your budget. So if you do see conditions on your grant that's still holding your funds, um, even if it's one of, for implementing and planning, your program grant specialist will be able to tell you when you're able to remove that condition and the necessary documentation it's going to take for that condition to be removed. You should have access to a percentage of your funds to start um, with the planning phase if your budget has been cleared. So if you're still um, receiving a hold on your funds, it may be at this point that you do not have a clear budget. And again, you need to contact your um, program manager so that they can assist you with getting your budget cleared. Great, thank you. Um, and this is the next question comes from one of the father ed mentoring grant programs. Um, and this question is directed to, I think Nicole and Josh, if you wanna address this as well, um, it's they're asking about the deliverable requirements for the planning phase. Um, so one of the, a couple of the requirements that we spoke about was uh, involved creating a reentry task force, tracking recidivism outcome data and other youth outcome data, um, and creating this implementation guide. For fatherhood mentoring grantees, what are the expectations around this in order to move on to the implementation phase? I didn't know if Josh wanted to start, but this is Nicole again. So in regards to your fatherhood grant, um, Patrick Dunkhorst has been in contact with many of you all in regards to if you are in a position to start your planning phase. Um, at this time, I do not believe we have any grantees that should be um, in a position to implement their program. Um, but Patrick Dunkhorst will be continuously reaching out to you in regards to the resources that are available for you to begin planning. Um, your planning phase will um, be, you'll be working with NRRC. I believe that the TA provider is on the call that will be working with you and he will probably be reaching out to you very soon. Josh, did you have anything to add? Yeah, uh, just to add to that, um, so the, um, the, uh, young father grantees are obviously a little different than um, the demonstration and the JSR grantees, and particularly because those went to nonprofit organizations and not public agencies. And so the same requirements um, that are in the Second Chance Act legislation and therefore in those grantees solicitations around a reentry task force and some of the other requirements um, are not part of the, um, the, the young father grantee requirements um, during the planning phase. Uh, at the same time, there is still the requirement to go through the planning phase, and there are some um, specific deliverables um, to meet so that um, we can make sure that grantees are ready and prepared for the implementation phase. And so, your TA provider from the National Reentry Resource Center, whose name is Ronin, will be reaching out to all of those grantees very shortly to share those planning and implementation guides, to talk through um, those requirements and to develop a plan together to meet those requirements and make sure that you're prepared 
and ready to be successful during the implementation phase. Great, thanks, Nicole and Josh. Um, this next question is around site visits. Um, so the first part of the question is one, when will, will we be informed about a site visit from OJJDP or NRC? Um, and then how should we prepare? What will be expected of us? Um, so, so I can talk about it from the uh, National Reentry Resource Center perspective, and then maybe Nicole can talk about it um, for OJJDP. And, and one of the things that I, I want to be clear with grantees about, and sometimes uh, it's a little confusing, is um, the National Reentry Resource Center, um, we are not a part of the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. and so. Um, while your uh, grant award and your solicitation does require you um, to receive technical assistance uh, from us, our role is really to support and guide your efforts, not to um, monitor compliance with your grant requirements um, or, or to hold you accountable in that way. And so um, our site visits are really technical assistance site visits. Um, there are no um, requirements around those site visits. It's really about us working in partnership with you um, to help support you during the planning phase, identify some of your technical assistance needs and also some of the things um, that you want to work on as an organization or as a larger juvenile justice system and determining together how we can uh, best use our time on site um, and how you can best make use of our resources, whether there are other expert technical uh, assistance providers that we should bring in to support your work during those site visits. So there's no established timetable or no established um, form that those site visits will take. Um, in general, um, what we found helpful is that during the planning phase, we work with grantees um, to really help identify their technical assistance needs and that we have a site visit that follows a few months after that phase, so generally sometime around the spring or the summer, where we really bring stakeholders together and provide some training and some meeting facilitation to um, help meet those um, technical assistance needs, but that's really going to per, per, uh, differ from grantee to grantee. Um, it also depends upon your different grant tracks, so um, the JSR grantees, because there's a more intensive planning process and um, more stringent um, planning phase deliverable requirements, um, we're a resource to be able to provide more on-site technical assistance to those grantees. Um, some grantees may be less, but really it's, it's designed um, in partnership with you to happen when and how will be most helpful to move your program forward. And this is Nicole. So what Josh was saying is right. There, is, Josh and his team um, will be doing site visits to help you with your training and technical assistance type um, deliverables and implementing your program. Um, our office also conducts monitoring visits, which there is a checklist that you will receive prior to that visit, and it will give you guidance as to what you will need to um, present and have available. A lot of times at these visits, um, staff is interviewed. Um, we would like to see, meet with some of your um, clients. We like to see how the program is being implemented. Um, we take that time to go through your financial records at times, some of your um, special conditions, um, reviewing your progress and program report with you. Um, we also use this time to identify any challenges that you may have so that we can try to work with you to bring your grant up to speed. There are also times where um, we get requests from our assistant attorney general and others um, and some higher ranking officials who are in the area and want to see the program. And with those requests, sometimes those requests you will only get um, a week or so notice and our expectation is that um, when that office reaches out to you, you make yourself available to um, showcase your program. You use that opportunity um, to discuss some of your best practices, 
um, the impact that you may be having within your state or community. So those are the two types of on-site visits that may occur. In addition, we work with, the, um, with our community and faith-based office, and they also may be visiting you all. Sometimes we'll visit you all too when the TTA provider is present just to get a chance to see how um, you may be engaged with that provider. Um, so there, there are a lot of times where we, we may come out and visit you. Again, you will get notice of this. You will have ample time to prepare for a visit, especially a visit that's requiring you to present your financial records, um, your time sheets, and things like that. Um, again, when it comes to monitoring, um, with some of the grant programs, because of the priority of that, pro that program or because of the, um, the, the complexity of that project, you may get a monitoring visit um, once a year or a couple of times a year. Um, our main purpose is to ensure that you're successfully implementing your grant, so we will do what we need to do to ensure that that's occurring. And you can also ask us if you want um, us to come visit your grant, you can put in a request and we will try to come out and visit you um, when we can. Great, thanks, Nicole. Um, and one other, another question was just where can um, grantees go right now to find out the status of their grant? Looks like uh, we may have lost Nicole. Um, I guess we can come back to that question. Uh, oh, Nicole's with us. Um, so, and I guess Sorry, Nicole, I two questions. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I'm not sure if you heard the question, but this one is just um, asking where grantees can go to find out the status of their grant. Okay, so you should be able to see the status of your grant in the grant management system. Um, at this point, if your budget has not been cleared or finalized, then um, your program grant manager should have reached out to you to try to re get the necessary information to ensure that your budget can be finalized. Again, all correspondence is usually done via the grant management system. So please make sure that you are checking that system for messages. And a lot of times what the grant manager may do is they also may um, email the point of contact. So it's um, very, very important that you go into the grant management system and ensure that the point of contact information is accurate or the authorizing official's information is accurate so that you can receive those emails. Great, thanks, Nicole. Um, so this question is directed to, I guess, Nicole and Josh, maybe can speak on this as well, I can. Um, I, we understand as a grantees, uh, as a grantee, there's expectation um, to fulfill establish and performance measures as a requirement of the grant and report on those measures. Um, can you talk about what those expectations are from OJGDP and then how if that's different from um, the deliverable that's required of grantees to, to develop a plan for tracking recidivism and other youth outcome improvements. So how are these sort of two pieces distinct? I guess, Nicole, if you want to speak first, just a bit about the expectations on behalf of OJJDP for a performance measure reporting, et cetera. So the OJJDP um, performance measures are a little bit different from our TTA provider. The performance measures that um, OJJDP looks at are kind of assessing your grant across and other grants across the department and presenting that data to Congress um, and other federal stakeholders. And so as you start to work on your grant, you will be instructed to um, kind of answer some questions and present some data in regards to um, some information that's, that's in our DC TAP system. And those 
questions and information, um, they're usually completely different from what our TA provider would ask you. Um, some of those questions get at like the reduction of recidivism, but looking at reduction of recidivism probably in a wider lens. Um, some of those questions look at um, just partnership and development, and, and they can change. Sometimes what also occurs is special grants are required to do a little bit more in regards to um, providing um, information about their performance measures. And so we have a person here, Carol, and your grant manager, they will reach out to you and kind of go over what the expectations are if they need additional information from you that they cannot get from your response in the DC TAT system. Great, thanks, Nicole. Um, and also, um, from the National Reentry Resource Center perspective, essentially our role is helping to support grantees um, in really building capacity to, one, collect particular data on youth recidivism data measure, create measurements around that data, um, and to use data effectively to understand sort of what's happening to youth in your system um, and to really make more data-driven decisions um, and better resource investments. So our work is looking more broadly at the overall system or your project um, in supporting the implementation of your reentry strategic plan. So um, we'll be working with you in that regard. Um, if you have any other questions at this time, um, please, please do add them at the lower right-hand portion of the screen. Um, it looks like we've addressed all of those that have come in thus far. Um, We'll wait a couple more minutes, but again, um, feel free at any point to reach out to um, the OJJDP program specialist contact information that was listed um, and or your National Reentry Resource Center technical assistance provider. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, we'll be sending you a copy of this PowerPoint for your records and to share with other staff, um, so you'll have this in, in, in hand. Um, Liz, there's, that, there's yeah. a question about um, how to change points of contact. Oh, okay, great. Nicole, I think uh, maybe you can answer that. Yes, yeah. and so in order to change your point of contact, you have to go into the grant management system and complete a grant adjustment notification for a change of program contact. And in the system, it will detail you what information you need to provide in order to change that point of contact. Um, also, what you could do is email your assigned program specialist and let them know that there needs to be a change of um, point of contact, and they can also walk you through the process um, that's in GMS. Great, thank you. Um, so, so with that, we'll end today's webinar. Um, so a after you exit the webinar today, a brief survey is gonna appear on your screen. Um, so we ask you to answer the questions in the survey um, as they'll be, be helping us at the Resource Center be able to improve upon some of the services we offer, um, including our long distance learning opportunities. Um, so we'd really appreciate it if you take just a few minutes to complete that. Um, and also, just a reminder to complete um, the survey regarding your program, which I referenced at the beginning of the webinar. Um, and if you didn't notice the link in the remi reminder emails that you received, we'll make sure that that's included in the email we send out next week um, with archived recording of this webinar, um, as well as a link to the PDF of the PowerPoint slides used in the webinar today. Um, the links will also be made available on the National Reentry Resource Center's website. Um, and lastly, you know, please remember to subscribe to the NRC newsletter at csgjusticecenter.org slash subscribe. Um, and other than that, thanks so much for your participation. Um, in OJJDP and NRC, we, we both together look forward to supporting you um, in the implementation of your project moving forward. So thanks again, everyone.